Here's the next video in our five-part video series on tube dissection. Yeah, we're going to take apart a 6L6, which is a beam pintode tube. It's used in a wide variety of amplifiers throughout history and in the power stage. And it, you know, it might deliver up 50, 60, 70 watts, depending on how you configure it. Let's go ahead and get started on taking this one apart. This is a 6L6. This is a 6L6. It's probably got the same uh, thickness of glass as that. That first one? That the first one. That okay. Yeah, but I could push pretty hard on that one. Probably okay. this one as well. <clears throat> you want up here again? or? Uh, if you look in there, you can kind of see the structure under the smoke. Yeah, right. Right in here. Right, just about the... Just about the little line is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, it's much thinner, isn't it? It is much thinner. Yeah. Sorry about that. Did it break all the way off clean? You don't even have to break any mm -hmm. glass out of it? I broke that one piece off. There's one little piece left, I think. Yeah, it's coming around. Yeah, okay, right there. That one. Interesting. Well, I don't think we hurt that one very uh -uh. much, did yeah. we? Yeah, That's a pretty robust tube there. These glasses, well, no, no, those are where are those today? We're taking apart a 6L6G version, it's got a plate dissipation of 19 watts, it's in that ST16 tube type. You can kind of see it's relatively the same size as our 5R4. Go ahead and take a look at some of these features here on this 6L6. You can kind of see down in there, you can see the grid, grid wires way down in there. We'll show you those in a little bit more detail in a minute. These things up here are spacers that keep the all the electrodes centered inside the the glass tube and that U-shaped structure is a, a heat dissipator for the screen grid. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. This big thing here is the plate itself and it's stapled together in six places. Oh, the first thing I tried to do was to undo these staples because I would have liked to keep half of the plate intact. But these staples are nothing like, like a staple you have on a piece of paper. These things are super stiff. I don't know if they were spot welded as well, but I couldn't get them really apart. And I was having to apply so much force, I was afraid that I was going to bang up this tube before I even got done. So I decided just to cut the mica apart on the top. I 
and some of the mica fell down in there so I want to get it out before it it uh, bent some of the wires on the grid the grid wires This thing here is a beam deflector. So I got the bottom part cut off. I'm just going to pull the plate right off of here. Go ahead and get rid of that one. We don't want it banging in anything. It's somewhat fragile at this point, so I was pretty careful so I didn't inadvertently bang any into anything and and uh, bend uh, my grid wires here. Both grids are spirally wound up from the bottom. And this is some precision work. I have no idea how they did this. This was probably circa 1940. I'd like to see some of the equipment that actually spun those wires on. So let's go ahead and zoom in here on some of this detail. Those support members have notches in them to hold the wires apart and you can see the coating on the cathode itself there's fairly uniform down underneath here you can see the two wires going up uh, that's the filament into the center of the cathode and then there's a spot welded wire that runs over to the pin that actually goes to the exterior pin. So all the power goes through that tiny little wire that makes our amplifiers work. Okay, in this video we worked on a beam power tube at 6L6. It's a, it's a workhorse and a lot of push-pull amplifier designs. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit like and stay tuned for more tube dissection videos.